you know, all of these brands are very important to us and very dear to our hearts, uh, but we also very much believe in the nutritional power uh, that comes from food, the health power that comes from good nutrition. We have one of the leading R&D budgets in the industry, and we've been patiently scaling a nutritional health business over the past decade. And um, we've been involved with AMU for more than four years. Uh, we've been very close to their research. We also have various allergy, uh, food allergy products in our lineup. And so to me, it's not so much a bet, it's an informed choice where we're scaling up in an area that really has a large medical need and where we believe we're bringing something to the table. Clearly why you decided to pay a 174% premium to the closing price. Mark, what are your aspirations when it comes to healthcare and, and biotech in general? I know it's your background, you used to run a, a global, a multinational German healthcare company. What else can investors expect as far as deals in this space? Well, it's not so much about biotech per se. It's really about nutritional therapies. This is the kind of business we're building up. It's been one of our best performers when it comes to organic growth. Uh, coming from about 2 billion in 2014, we'll be hitting close to 3.3 uh, this year. So a very successful business that we do want to scale up where we believe we can bring our science to the table. So I'm happy to contribute to that, but there was a lot existing before I joined and, uh, and uh, something that's truly promising. Um, in terms of the premium, it's also important to look at the recent share price development. And um, so we believe this is a very um, attractive offer for AMU and shareholders, but it's also a good deal for us. Can we expect, Mark, more M&A to come, whether that's buying or selling parts of the business? Well, M&A is part of our growth strategy. We've made that very clear in uh, recent investor events. In fact, when you look at the history of the company, I think it's always been a very balanced story between organic growth and M&A, about two thirds of the growth coming from organic growth and uh, one third coming from M&A. Uh, over the past few years, we've been through a fairly ambitious portfolio transformation, about 50 deals, both buying and selling. We've announced some pretty significant strategic reviews last year and early this year. And we also made it clear that uh, ultimately, of course, we want to get larger, not smaller, and um, hence uh, acquisitions are part of the menu. One of the reviews you were looking at was the water portfolio. You own big brands like Pellegrino and Poland Spring. Has the, has the pandemic and the shift in consumer habits toward buying things like bottled water changed your view on, and the performance of this category for you? So we announced that review in June when you know COVID and some of its implications uh, were already well known. Uh, we've made it clear all throughout the winter and spring that we are reviewing our strategies. And so this is the outcome. It's about our North American regional spring water brands and also our purified water in North America. Some of the leading international premium brands, such as some Pellegrino and also functional water products are gonna be, be remaining with us because we see a lot of promise uh, in those segments going forward. And, and you're selling ice cream, Hagen does? So the ice cream business is something that we contributed to a joint venture with a private equity partner earlier this year. and. Um, that move also, I think, is part of a longer term play of creating the world's leaders, uh, largest and leading uh, ice cream company that encompasses significant positions in Europe and North America and select international markets. Mark, can you give us a picture of what's happening inside the grocery store? When the pandemic hit, in the U.S. at least, we saw tremendous panic buying and grocery stock ups. What's happened since? How much has it slowed down as economies and states have reopened in this country and as the stimulus benefits have worn off? Yeah, really important question. So I think initially everyone was concerned and kind of stocking up. I think uh, by and large, uh, consumers now have the confidence that the supply chains are working and that shelves uh, continue to get stocked. And hence what you're seeing now is not so much the spike here from uh, short-term pantry loading, but what you're seeing is true increasing in-home demand because people spend more and more time in their homes. Um, there's less out-of-home consumption, uh, but you know, there's more cooking at home, baking at home, they consume more coffee at home. So all of this is driving demand and um, not all of this is so much related here to the stimulus um, uh, uh, support, but rather really true underlying demand because people need to eat and drink and uh, that happens increasingly in home. We're seeing increased shift to e-commerce, uh, digital, getting stuff delivered to home. We're seeing increased interest in health, and hence, uh, you know, anything that stimulates the immune system, for example, is in high demand. 
So vitamins, minerals, for example, I see tremendous growth. And um, overall, I think, you know, with some of the uh, slowdown of the economy, you'll also see an increased interest in value offerings and, and good prices.